Hey guys, welcome. Welcome back to Inner Stage Window, my Saturday stream, which is uh, typically a conversation with my friends. Um, but uh, but today we're going to do things a little bit different. Now, Landon is here with us. Say hi, hi. Landon. Hi, Landon. <laughs> hi, Landon. <laughs> I, I, found, I sound so enthused. Uh, oh my gosh. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not doing well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thanks yeah. For, thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um Lunar and uh and Kendra it looks like are here. Oh, so they know. <laughs> um so they know. Uh they're aware. Landon did tweet tweet about this, but um but I'll I'll let Landon tell the story, but in just a moment, because I want to go ahead and get things started first. So, you know, typically at the beginning of, of the month we would do uh, our media stream, which as you guys know, that remember from December, this would have been like the uh, fourth Harry Potter book. But um, we're pushing that back to next week, which Landon is going to explain in just a little bit. So what we're actually going to be doing this week is going back to our Sims 2 legacy. So if you remember from last time, um, poor Tormund uh, set himself on fire and the family only has 10 simoleons. So we're going to see how this goes. Uh, Landon's raising two teenagers by herself. I think she had found somebody that she might uh, have. A, yeah, she has someone that she has a crush on, this Christy right here. So um, so we're going to see how that goes. We're going to see how she's going to handle two teenagers and uh, and see if she is can get interested in this Christy person. Um, right. She has about six more days before she becomes an elder and uh and her two teenagers are pretty are fairly uh are fairly young so this one kid it will become a teenager probably this stream and then um tormund he has 11 more days as a teenager so that's that about that so she's gonna get old before he even <laughs> gets out of his teenage stage <laughs> all right so that being said i'm gonna hit play on the game y'all tell me how the how the audio levels sound if you can hear the game or if it sounds too quiet or loud or whatever once i actually start playing and then, um, and I'll turn it over to to Landon to talk a little bit about what's been going on with her. Um, I caught the vid. <laughs> I caught the COVID. Uh, two years, almost. We almost made it two years. I'm so angry because uh, I was very safe and did all the things we were supposed to do. And then, because of someone else's lack of wanting to communicate uh -huh. i ended up catching it <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now i have the vid so i have been away from work and quarantining by myself and let me tell you guys uh there's so much like i feel like there's so much media going on right now about like how it's so terrible you either go to the hospital or how it's like nothing at all uh i i was i was firmly in the middle of those two camps it's not fun like you don't want to catch the vid like everyone who's like obviously there's asymptomatic people but everyone who's yeah. like oh it was nothing lied they lied to your face you're right they didn't <laughs> go to the hospital but it like sucks <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> yep they um die, coughing out a lug <laughs> Yep, that was my I... experience too. It was it was not fun. I had major fatigue, major major fatigue when I caught it. And I caught it back before there was a vaccine or anything. Um, so uh, so I didn't really get much opportunity to to not. But you know, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't wish it on anybody. It wasn't like just a cold. You know, it was maybe like one of the worst colds ever. <laughs> Yeah, like, well, as a teacher, unfortunately, you build this idea of, like, you have to work through a cold because, let's be honest, the worst thing, there's one thing worse than teaching while sick, and that's writing subplans. Mm -hmm, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And trying to get someone else, and then you have to come back later and fix everything that they screwed up anyway, yeah, so it's, it like, such a waste. <laughs> it's, it's the fucking worst. So, like, I was, like, you learn how to power through with colds, and it, like, sucks, because it's, like, you shouldn't have to go to school, or you shouldn't have to go to work if you're feeling like crap, because you're not your best teaching. Mm -hmm. um, but you do, because subplans fucking suck. Mm -hmm. um like I have taught through many a cold and I even I pushed through it on Tuesday because I was had tested negative mm -hmm. um and then I tested on Tuesday and I tested negative then even though I was feeling like shit uh and I and I woke up on Wednesday morning and I was so tired that I was like it's actually better for me to write subplans at four o'clock in the morning 
Mm -hmm. um, and to pull myself out of school because I also don't believe this negative test that I've received. Um, <laughs> so woo hoo. And it turns out that was a good thing. I took a home test on Wednesday and it was positive. Yep. So, and then that was when Karen was like, maybe we should do Harry Potter on Saturday. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I messaged, I messaged Landon because she had put in one of the group chats that we're both in um, that she had tested positive and she was going to have to spend the day writing sub plans and she was really um, not happy about that. And so I was like, hmm. So I, I messaged her um, because uh, I think we've shared this before, but on the back end, the PowerPoints, uh, that we make landon has the first pass at those like she she yeah. makes those and then i proofread and and edit them right so she does the majority of the work for for those for that piece and um so basically i was like how is she going to write sub plans and make us a powerpoint like it's just not it's not going to happen and so i was like do you i was like do you want to stream on saturday or should i just stream something and we push harry potter back here's what the schedule would look like if we push it back and um she was like i think you messaged back like yes oh my god or yes thank you or it was something like that it was like really short yes. but like i could feel yes, the relief <laughs> I was like, yes, thank you. And then I finished my sub plans and then I've been asleep since then. Oh <laughs> like that's gosh. literally what has happened. <laughs> um, I've been basically asleep since Wednesday. Oh gosh. Um, um yep. That's what happened to me. That's what happened to me mild, when I had COVID too. This is a mild case. Like I'm not, I never got a fever. I never lost my taste. I haven't, I mean, obviously I still have it, um, but I'm very much on the, uh, again, I can be awake for several hours at a time. So I'm on the mending end of this. Yeah, um, but like I never lost my taste and smell. Um, I never had breathing problems. By the way, I'm also I'm vaccinated and I'm boosted. So like, get yo get your vaccine out there. But also like mm -hmm. I took all the precautions that you're supposed to take, and it still fucking sucked. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's the Omicron version that I got uh, personally, just with how many negative tests I got while I still had symptoms. Mm -hmm. Um. But like, and that's supposed to be the the nicer quote unquote version for people who are vaccinated. The milder one, like if you if you're fully vaccinated and boosted or whatever, like that one's supposed to be really mild. And like, it sucks. Like, and I'm, it sucks. So, anyone who's out there sitting there and being like, "Oh, I had COVID and it's no big deal," like it's it is a big deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Please stop spreading it. Please mm -hmm. quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it means that you have to miss a vacation. Anyway. Yeah. So, so the, if you're if you're reading between the lines here, and, and I won't I won't share any personal details, Lana, but just so that yeah. people are understanding kind of why you're saying some of that stuff. Um, <laughs> And so basically what happened to Landon is what happened to a lot of people. This is actually, you're one of, I think, five people that have told me basically this same story is, um, is she, she, she went and did Christmas with her family and that's how she got it. Um, and, and I feel like, so that's happened to two coworkers that I know of and, um, it happened to you and it happened to a couple other of our online friends as well. So I want to say like, I'm up to knowing five people that this has happened to, like, it feels like a lot, you know? Don't, don't get me wrong. Like, it sucks. And missing out on stuff sucks. But part mm -hmm. of part of this whole thing is that you don't know whether you have it or not. And if you think that you have it, please be safe and don't spread it. Because you yeah, also don't yeah. know who you're spreading it to. I'm very thankful that I took the precautions that I, that I did. But I teach 50 kids, most of whom are unvaccinated because they can't be vaccinated. Yep. Like, and that that's scary that I could pass it on to those kids it's and so it's like, scary yeah so, scary. so please please do your part yeah and i mean your your situation is is fine like you're very healthy but not necessarily every single one of those kids that you teach is <laughs> you know yeah, there's like, so many of them there's got to be at least one that has some kind of like immunity yeah. issue or yeah. you know some kind of comorbidity that would be really awful for them to get covid or something right like out of that many there has to be at least a few so so to me like this irresponsibility that a lot of people have in regards to this is just like like how do you not think of yourself as a murderer when you're out behaving like this i just can't i can't grasp it you know so many people are so self like involved and just like they don't look beyond anything and it sucks yeah. 
and I mean that's and we've been seeing that for the last two years in general yeah. and it's the worst yep um, or like people that are the worst to me is people that that got it and they didn't happen to have very bad symptoms when they got it and so like yeah. now they just believe that it's no big deal and it's like you know, just because it wasn't a big deal for you doesn't mean it's not a big deal. <laughs> it's like, it, it just blows my mind. It makes no sense. <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah. And I oh think this God. is quite, quite, ser quite uh, interesting that we're, that we're talking about this because um, if you guys remember our very first stream together, we just kind of ranted about the pandemic for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I think, I mean, and that's, I mean, and this is spreading right like yeah I'll, I think that what's really difficult right now is the government's refusal to do anything about it like the fact that the CDC just came out and was like yeah we have no scientific proof that qu that quarantine needs to be less than 10 days but we're gonna make it half that stupid um and that there are very few school systems that have actually closed like my school system isn't closed and it's it's sick it's 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 disheartening because like I am the third sixth grade teacher out. Mm -hmm. So there aren't there aren't subs to cover anything. Um, mm. And there haven't been subs to cover anything all year, which means teachers are expected to cover other teachers. And that's been happening all over the country. And you have things like um, the Chicago Public School District right now um, that are like literally got locked out and are being, and are, what happened was uh, the school was going to close and that time wasn't being considered as part of the contract because the teachers weren't being paid or expected to work during that time. So all of a sudden school was going to be closed for two weeks and teachers weren't going to be paid for those two weeks. Oh my God. Are you serious? Yeah. Which is why, and then the union organized. And so now, and so teach, and so the actual school district locked teachers out of their emails and weren't able to hold virtual classes. So like teachers are now like having to figure out what they can do to fill those eight hours so that they can then come back in the summer and say no we worked those contracted hours even if you said that we didn't and that's like the whole big huge fight that's been happening right now in chicago um and it's leading to teacher strikes all over the country um, holy crap <laughs> yeah it's it's fucking insane um and it's because the government won't shut down again and i get it like obviously we want kids in school especially in my district we want kids in school because we want kids fed um, mm -hmm. I have a very high, I teach in a very high poverty, uh, town, which means that a majority of our kids aren't being fed if they're not in school. Yeah. But, um, but there has to be another way than like opening up kids for getting sick and, mm. and having those reactions and dying and Maine is overflowed right now. Like our national guard, like literally pulled out, even though our, we have zero beds available in the entire state. Like, it's just, it's scary times and we're scarier now than we were at the start of the pandemic when we were bitching about, uh, when we were bitching about that two years ago, mm -hmm. but uh, now nothing is being done. And that's so disheartening. Oh gosh. I, I hate that. It's a um, shame. We're, we're going to just, we're just pause the pandemic talk for just a second to say, yes. welcome Jane. And also now that Lily is uh, aged up, we get to choose an aspiration for her. Oh, so we Lord. have... Yeah, so Landon's a family aspiration. I want to say we had Tormund being a fortune aspiration, but I actually can't remember. Um, so let's choose something different. We can choose um, romance, which means that Lily will want to have lots of partners, and uh, or we can choose popularity, which means she'll want to have lots of friends. Uh, pleasure, honestly, I think pleasure is kind of boring. Like they just kind of want to take bubble baths all the time. But if you guys want that for Lily, that's fine because she's the spare, so she can do that. Or knowledge, which means she'll want to gain skill points for the most part. What do you think? Hmm. knowledge knowledge okay we'll yes. do knowledge so her turn-ons are athletic and great cook so she wants she wants um uh, she wants basically a man that looks good and cooks good and okay. her turn-offs are underwear so i guess she just wants them nude so okay. there we go that's okay. not terrible and we can age up some of her friends with her um so let's choose one of her friends let's choose um let's see who does she have the best? She has the best friendship with this Corey. So we'll age up Corey too. So he can become a teenager along with her. Yes. Okay. 
So good job, Lily. Good job. So welcome in, Jane. I can't remember if I said that. Um, and I saw a message up here earlier that I wanted that I was wanted to comment on, um, but we were still talking. We we're talking about the pandemic. It says I saw an RP ad for sixteen plus age gate with no edgy kids here, and it sent me. Oh yeah, sure. No edgy kids. I believe that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, Lunar says knowledge would be cool too. So there we go. All right. So we go. We've got Lily, the knowledge sim. Yeah, okay, Tormund was fortunate. I was right in remembering that. All right, everybody eat some cake for breakfast. So yeah, I just feel like I feel like um when you describe kind of what is happening for for you with uh with your covid, I mean, I feel like that's very similar to to what happened to me. Only yeah. of course, um slightly different on the symptoms, but my main symptom was fatigue too. Like I was just freaking tired. I wanted to sleep all the time. Um, and, and I would wake up and I would think I'm feeling a little better. No, nope, I was not feeling a little better. I was not. <laughs> uh, it was awful. My colds are usually like three days. Like that first day starts feeling bad. That second day is like really tired, really sucks. And then that third day I'm feeling a lot better. And mm. so I was like, the third day came and I was like, I'm going to feel a lot better tomorrow. And then I woke up and I felt worse. And I was just like, no, mm. <laughs> this is terrible. Yeah. It was a little back and forth for me. I feel like too, like I don't, I'm trying to remember, but I just feel like it was it, it wasn't like consistent. It wasn't like I slowly got worse and then slowly got better. It was like, it was like a like kind of roller coaster for a while. No, it definitely, it definitely was. Yep. Um, yeah. So I'm just hoping I'm out and I'm quarantined until Monday. So mm. I'm hoping that by Monday I'm feeling better. And that I can actually go to school and see my kiddos again. <laughs> so what what happens if you're not feeling better when Monday comes along? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, the, to. Um, <laughs> the CDC says that you have to be symptom free for 24 hours mm -hmm. before you can go to school. Um, but my school is also only Choose giving it. out uh, time, five days at a time. Mm. So, um, I mean, I'm, and I'm having to use my own personal sick days for all this and stuff like that. Oh, um, so you don't get specific COVID sick days? No, it's uh, my, my contract was very kind this year where they allowed extra days than we normally have. Oh, just have three sick days. Uh, and I think we're up to 10. Wow. Um, okay. I just have to, <laughs> I just have to really quick, like, <laughs> Um, I'm so glad we picked Knowledge Sim for Lily because wow, what a freaking nerd. This is her cold clothes attire. It's literally like she just went through her closet and was like, I'm just going to put on the warmest things whether they match or not. Just look at this. Look at this girl. Okay, okay. Uh, Gatorade, but she, I, you know what? I love the style. It's a <laughs> 90s grudge to me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what she's going for. Maybe she's very nostalgic for an age she didn't live in. Um, sort of thing. Um, I have some cool ideas for Haley, but she'd have to die for that to happen, so we'll see. I am always for killing off characters if it's going to make things more interesting or more fun for everybody, so I think you should go for it. The wolf icon? Oh, the wolf icon means she wants to become a werewolf, or he wants to become a werewolf. <clears throat> Which is a thing you can do in this game. Well, at least it, it sucks that you're having to use, they do not have COVID specific sick days, but I'm glad that they gave you extra ones. Yes. So we'll see. Um, yeah. So as long as I'm symptom free for 24 hours, um, then I can return to school, which will be very nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we had a mm -hmm. snow day yesterday. So I had one less day of stuff. Oh. Nice. oh, yay. So does the snow day mean that, that you didn't have to have a sub that day? Like the kids just got off? Yes. That means they Fabulous. just got off and I got off, which means that I'll pay for it in June, but it means that at least I'm good. Well, that's June Landon's problem, right? June Landon's problem. Mm -hmm. That's right, Kendra. What teen doesn't want to become a werewolf? Honestly, me. I wanted to be a vampire. Oh, well, I guess that's the other option, right? <laughs> One or the other. I was Team Edward. Mm. Makes sense. It does, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh my God. Speaking of TikTok things and Tumblr stuff. Uh, so do you know that Stephanie Meyer is writing a new Twilight book? No, why didn't she already write like an extra one that was like from no, no, um, Ed's said. perspective? She did. Uh, that was published last year. It was okay. trash. Read the whole thing. It was great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I didn't read it, of course, because I'm not a fan of Twilight, but I, I definitely remember clicking on like one of those YouTubers reviewing it, and I enjoyed the video talking about how awful Edward's inner monologue was. Yeah, no, he's like a total sociopath, which I appreciated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He um, should be. But this one is called Moonchild. Ooh. And it takes place seven years later. Um, and it is Renezme or or Ricochet or whatever the fuck her name is. <laughs> and <Jakey>. Ricochet. <laughs> uh yeah, no one can it's a joke on on TikTok that no one can say her name right. It's my favorite. Mm -hmm. Uh and Jacob, because seven years old means that she's full grown in her in her lifespan. Because mm. uh, that's how the fast human vampire aging process works. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So yeah, apparently two of the pages have been leaked, and they have been being read on TikTok. And I just felt that everyone needed to know this. Because oh my god! It sounds like it's gonna be trash. <laughs> Do you have those pages? Could we read I don't, them? But I can. Ooh, maybe I can find them. If you can find them, and you're okay with that much talking. I would love if you could will, read them. I will talk. I will talk at the sacrifice of my voice. Hold on. Let me see if I can find them. Okay. Next next hydrate is for Landon, by the way, since she's going to see if she can sacrifice this for us for our entertainment. I love <laughs> I love my Gatorade. Oh, that was on TikTok so much this morning. Let's see if I can find... Does That's she have right. a job too? Why is the, why is there still a car out here? Who is this car for? Oh, it's Landon getting home. Dirt, dirt. I understand now. Why don't you go take a shower, Landon? You stink. Okay. <laughs> oh, I don't, I know you were only in there briefly because you got tired last night. But um, our starter is named Landon in the in the Nuzlocke that we're doing on Thursdays. I love. I'm this. doing my best to keep you alive. I've only killed off one Pokemon so far, it was a total accident, and it was, um, not, it was not anyone, like, it wasn't a friend's name, it was named Potato Loaf, so I haven't really killed anybody super important yet. Oh, perfect. Okay, so, oh no. I I'll do my best, Lunar. It what? seems like it might be fake. Oh no! It, was, was it still, is, is it still funny? Like, I is it worth reading anyway? It might be. Hold on. And like, how fake? Is it fake as in like, this is from an old draft that's not going to make it into a book, and so like, it's real asterisk? Or is this like, straight up just made up? I mean, it sounds like it's straight up made up. No! I don't like that. Which I hate. Mm -hmm. Because I loved how terrible this was. Man. Well, okay, so just... Well, here's the deal. What Stephanie said is that she does have more books written that she has outlined out in his writing. Okay. Um, and they would take place between Jacob and Renesme. No, see, I was trying to think of another R word, but my brain wasn't working fast. Oh, yeah, COVID does that too. <laughs> Retail. I don't know what her name is. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Um, but it sounds like there are no immediate plans, but this TikToker, um, Kate, like, joked about, or this TikToker is pretending she got a leak. Oh, but it's, it's like just straight up pretend. Yeah. <laughs> Ravioli, sorry. Uh, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's Ravioli. a good one. Oh, remorse. Kendra has the best one. Remorse. <laughs> Well, uh, this that is a shame. Names that she wants Scarlett Johansson to play Revelance, aka Re mm. Renesmee. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but there's no point proof of that of Stephanie Meyer having said that at all. Mm -hmm. um, That's, that does sound like a meme. 
Because if I, I don't know, you because you're not like you don't into anime, so you probably don't remember this. But oh, um, I... well, whenever they made the Ghost in the Shell with a uh, with Scarlett Johansson, it was like a meme that one of the um, creators of the original Ghost in the Shell basically said that that was his dream casting or her dream casting. I can't remember who exactly said it, so that became a meme because um, it was just kind of funny. Oh man! Like, okay, I'll... you wanted Scarlett Johansson for your Japanese character. That's cool. Oh, sweet. Tormund got a promotion. I let Johansson have everything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it sounds like it is fake, but it was, oh, man, I'm I'm saddened by this because it was really funny and relevant for about 30 seconds this morning for me. Oh, uh, I was well. like, oh, man, she's right. She's Ricotta. I just saw it from to top. <laughs> <laughs> um, that she's writing even more trash and it'll be very trashy. And I love that. Mm. I just wish I wish um, Stephanie Meyer would lean more into her trash side and less into her um, Mormon side. I just think that would make everything so much better um, if she was also, just like reject Mormonism, embrace trash. I wish she would just embrace the age gaps that she likes instead of trying yeah. to like, make them feel better. Like it's fine that you enjoy shipping, you know, the young, barely legal people with adults. That's fine. That's totally okay. I get yeah, why you're trying to like moralize it. I understand why you'd feel like the auntie is disliking that. I get it. Lean into it. It's fine. It's okay. It's, yeah. You know what? Just own it. That's the best thing to do. I 110% uh, agree. And she won't, which is the sad part. And now yeah. we're going to get things like, you know, being like, oh, there actually isn't an age difference. It's mm -hmm. like, no, there, there is an age difference between then just because just because you don't think edward aged in the last hundred years there is <laughs> he did oh that's a shame landon you want to be friends with this person named samantha but samantha is off the grid she doesn't own a phone kill so, her yeah. <laughs> well we can't be friends then i guess because in sims that's the best way well i guess we could teleport her to the lot i mean i get that if someone was like Yo, I don't have a cell phone. I'd be like, we never stay in contact. <laughs> <laughs> How would I ever get, name? To, get to know you outside of this three second interactions that I'm okay with every day? Mm -hmm. Samantha and Automaz. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can <laughs> summon her. Yeah, summon Automaz. <laughs> oh, what's you that? What's happening? I just heard the uh, the ding. Ah, thank you so much for following House of Night Lover seventy five. <gasps> How are you doing today? Night. Oh my god, I love that series. Oh, really? I don't know anything about it. It's a vampire series. Oh, okay. That's good. Oh, yeah, Samantha. No, okay. Ah, uh, is we we summoned her by talking about Twilight. Well, I um, I just clicked the button and cheated and summoned her. Yeah. Hello, hello. Well, uh, you know, since you since you, it's a book, right? The, this yeah. is a vampire it's, book. It's like a it's like a ten it's like a ten series book series. Okay, so I have I have something to say then, everybody. Um, do you hate reading? Because I do, but I love books. <laughs> so you know what solves that problem for me? Audiobooks. What? And Inner Stage Window is now sponsored by Audible. So if you would like to get a 30-day free trial of Audible, please use our link. I just put it in the chat right there. And uh, and get your 30 days free there so that um, uh, we can kind of get some of that sweet, sweet ad revenue. And uh, Sorry, not ad revenue. Uh, sweet, sweet sponsorship money. So if you're interested in Audible, um, please use our link, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So I, uh, what Karen doesn't know is that I started a book journal this year. And I have Ooh, a book. Really? Yeah, Tell us more. I made a whole, I will post. It is very aesthetic. I got inspired uh, from from TikTok on my way back from visiting family this holiday uh, oh. to make like a bullet journal, but for books. Um, and I was like, I'm going to read a hundred books this year. It's mm. about a hundred books, which school will help with because they make me read so many books in school. Um, <laughs> But I, it's just very funny that then a week later we're getting sponsored by Audible because um, I'm like, now I can do this thing with Audible's help. 
Oh my gosh, I love that. I think I feel like those the applause and the wow is not only just for the Audible sponsorship. I feel like that's also for your book journal. Because like, what a cool thing! What a cool thing for for a sixth grade teacher to be doing too. I feel like that's like so completely on brand and and like and even if it's even if you didn't make it super aesthetic, I just feel like the idea of you having a book journal like is aesthetic for you. You know what I mean? I'm very excited for it. I have a rating system and everything. I have, I like drew out books on a bookshelf and now I fill in the names of every book that I've read. Mm. Um, and then I like color it to the color of how many stars it is. It's beautiful. I will post photos. Yes, um, please do. On Keep the us updated. Uh, still working on the aesthetics. I will probably take the next couple of days to like finish that up, but it's awesome. So I have a book recommendation because I've, I've already started my reading. If we are, if you're looking for a book recommendation from Audible, I have one. Um, and that is the song of Achilles by <gasps> Madeline Miller. Okay. Uh, which is a retelling of, uh, the Iliad from, uh, particles and Achilles point of view. Mm. I do love Achilles is one of the best characters in the Iliad so that it sounds is. very interesting to me it's the retelling of of their love story or you know friendship as history deems it but <laughs> 100% would recommend um it I got it got a four out of five in my books and five is like the will read over and over again when I'm sick sort of level so it's not quite there but four is a really high le- is really high so I would recommend okay I'm for this. I'm for this rating system. So basically, four and five are both like really good yes. books. Got Three, it. Jane says like, that book's good too. Yeah, it's it's a good. It's a really good book, and it's very well written. And I read it in like a day, so it's uh, very readable and very approachable. I love that. I love that. Um, apparently, this House of Night is getting a um, TV oh. show. House of Night Lover. What network is it on? Is it or streaming service? Like where where is it? Um, because um, I'd be interested. I actually think it will suit better as a uh, TV series anyway, because it is like 10 books long. Mm. Um, and it doesn't have... Harry Potter was special in its own way that it had a certain amount of times that fit into movies. So like every book is a year. Yeah. Whereas most fantasy young adult series do not have that luxury. They, they're they kind of random in their timing. Yeah. Um, I think that the only other one that kind of fit that mold was Hunger Games had that somewhat. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that that's what makes a successful movie versus what would make a successful TV show. I think House of Night would, is going to be a very successful TV show, um, which is awesome. Oh, so, okay. But I'm, yeah, there's a lot of YA becoming TV shows right now. So I'm, I'm interested to see where this new fad is, is going to go because um, A Court of Runners of Thorns, which is a book that I have recommended to you, Karen. Yes, you have told me I should read that. It's becoming a, is becoming a, a TV show as well. Oh, okay. So we'll, see, we'll see how this new, this new trend of YA series becoming TV shows rather than books will will impact us because i think you know i'm here for it new new um we had it with uh shadow and bone and some others yes obviously the vampire diaries was a book series too um Mm -hmm. but i'm excited to see since a lot of it is going to be happening so (laughs) i'm i'm here for it i think that um that the whole idea of turning things into tv shows is much better because it's just the the medium like what you do in a book and like what, what makes a book good is a completely different than what makes a movie good whereas i think what yeah. makes a book good versus what makes a tv show good are a little bit more um symbiotic you know they're a little bit yes. closer in in you know what what they are so i just think i think it's going to be i think this is really i love this era where we're turning our favorite books into tv shows instead of movies now of course i still love a good movie it's just that you know a movie is limited it it only is like two hours three hours at the very most and so i just feel like you have to tell a so much tighter story with so fewer characters where it you know in a book you can just sprawl on and on with like a gajillion characters and like a gajillion plot points you know very similar to how you can do in a tv show so um so yeah i just think i think they fit together better I think it also tells the luxury of, of time. Yes. Um, 
movies have to be very, very fast paced. I mean, if you look at it this way, a movie script, every page is one minute of a movie on mm-hmm. average. Yep. Um, which means that if you're taking a book, you're already looking at a 300 page. Obviously, it wouldn't have any of the of the actual like narration or anything like that. Um, but you, you're looking at a pretty thick movie <laughs> that you yeah. have to immediately cut down from. Yeah. (laughs) And it depends on how introspective the book is, too, because if it's a very (laughs) introspective book, then, yeah, you can communicate things in a visual medium much faster. Um, But if it's a not very introspective book, then, yeah, you've totally screwed yourself up on timing, you know? Let's also be honest, YA is not not considered the most introspective. No, it's typically not. It's typically not. (laughs) So, no, I think that... um, I think that I am much more on on board with uh, series becoming TV shows, and I feel like that they're set up for success more that way. Yes, uh, it's just the idea of what I am concerned with is like um, I. It's been a very long time since I read The House of Night, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do anything from there. But Magician Magicians is a good example of this, which is a book series mm. for kids. Um, turned into a TV show where it was really great and it followed the books very close, fairly closely um, for the first two books and the first season. <laughs> and then it completely fell off the plot um, because they had started messing things up that was in later books and put them earlier and, and, and messing with the order of things that all of a sudden they stopped being true to the books at all. Yeah. Um, diverged into two separate things. Which is where I feel like, okay, that's what sucks. <laughs> yeah, and that does definitely happen. Um, as soon as they start messing with things and taking liberties, then they realize that they can't cover certain plot points that happen in the books in the same way. I think yeah. that's just kind of, it, that's an, an, an unfortunate consequence of, um, of people wanting to put their own stamp on things. And, and, I, and I can't imagine a creative team, you know, really wanting to adapt things very faithfully. Um, and I think the few instances that we have where where things are adapted faithfully often are not good because they try to just translate something um, that works really well in a certain medium into another medium. Like I'll give a I'll give an example of this that I think is a really good example in um, in uh, Hunger Games. When you watch the movie version, if you don't really understand what's going on in Katniss's mind, like she's really weird and annoying and frustrating to watch. Because yeah. <laughs> she's incredibly quiet, thoughtful person. You don't know what she's thinking most of the time. And in a book, that's totally fine for your protagonist to do because you're privy to their thoughts. And so it's okay if none of the other characters know what they're thinking, you know what they're thinking, so it's cool. But in the movie, when you try to portray that without her inner monologue, she just comes off as this like weird, frustrating character that's like you can't connect with because you don't have their access to her thoughts anymore. Yeah. So, you know, well, sometimes sometimes trying to stick very faithfully is not the best. <laughs> I, I agree with that, but I also feel like that if you are adapting a series into like I so it's not even like the adaptation of a character and how mm-hmm. you're showing that character. For me, it's like if they made Harry Potter into a movie series and then all of a sudden they introduce Sirius Black in the first season because he's a popular <laughs> character and everyone uh-huh. loves him. It's like, okay, you have now taken something that happens later in the series to introduce for fan favorites in the first season that yep. honestly fucks up the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's like, oh, they actually introduced the idea of Horcruxes from the sixth one in the second book and it's like how what's that? <laughs> how <do you> do this <laughs> because by the time you're trying to get to the third and fourth the fifth season you've already written yourself out of a out of a thing because like you've had to entertain the idea of Sirius Black for the last two years so you've mm-hmm. probably already said that he's a good kid ca- he's a good guy anyway and then mm-hmm. it's like okay then what are you going to do in the third season or the third book when there's like this mystery of Sirius Black is trying to kill you because no we already know he's not very very true um jane has a a good point the same thing happened to to my husband when he tried to watch it uh jane so here's what she says as someone who grew up with and read wheel of time series religiously the show was offensive yeah um my husband felt the same way he was like uh this show is not good like he could not engage with it like at all um just couldn't you know it was just it was just bad 
and it was because the things that they did differently were just like they just weren't right you know um and they they kind of like totally changed the tone of things to where it was just like impossible to uh to get a feel for it i feel i feel very similar um in effort like wheel of time i didn't watch wheel of time but uh city of bones was one of my favorite series growing up mm-hmm. and they did that with a tv show too where it was like what the fuck guys you've mm-hmm. changed the whole point of this mm-hmm. um oh yep. i'm so sorry jane oh you know sometimes it's upsetting you know we get attached to these things yeah. and i don't think there's i don't think there's any shame in, in that so long as you recognize that like you know, oh, maybe it was a little silly to cry, but I don't think the actual crying is a big deal, you know. <clears throat> but Sirius Black is the godfather, so we could have a prequel with him and James while still going through the pregnancy. Yeah, that would be so yeah. cool. I just feel like I'm That's scared that different... they would screw it up. I'm yeah. scared that they would screw it up, just like they've kind of screwed up Dumbledore's backstory, you know. Oh, my God. Um, um, so, yeah. yeah. You're not allowed to touch. They're not allowed to touch my uh, Jimmy P. Mm-hmm. But uh... Oh, House of Night Lover, since you're new, I will tell you this. We are slowly going through and reading and kind of doing like a, a live stream book club of um of various pieces of media and one of the main ones that we're doing is harry potter and we actually have an episode which you can find on my youtube channel where we go all go and talk all about the marauders and and things so if you're interested in that sort of thing um we have a whole marauders episode that's usually the point of our show yep usually Um, we would and we would be talking about harry potter today um (laughs) except of course for the covid so that didn't really work out (laughs) dying i am trying to mute my mic when i cough i don't catch it all the time i'm so sorry guys it's okay it's okay it just adds to it you know it adds to the realism of what's going on i'm actually sick (laughs) i would not (laughs) be able to talk about the fourth harry potter book with i am my mom loves harry potter Potter. that makes me feel so old (laughs) karen i hate to tell you this but your students probably tell you that shit all the time don't they (laughs) me and that i'm old yeah no they, they, they say things like my dad loves harry potter or whatever um yeah i mean the more hurt, hurtful stuff is like i don't like harry potter <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> red harry potter child i know your reading <laughs> level just stop <laughs> um, my mom was a teen mom oh thank you thank you house that makes me feel slightly better <laughs> It's okay. It's okay though. I'm used to feeling old on the internet. It's kind of like, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Once you get, once you get over 30 in fandom that you just kind of like are constantly reminded that you are um, over 30 in fandom. Yeah. I think that's just a thing also that when you hit your upper twenties, I'm just like, wow, I'm, I'm fairly old. Mm -hmm. My mother, my mother at my age had a child, had me at my age. (laughs) She was me and I'm sitting here being like, I don't know another word that starts with R so that I could replace it with this child name. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, there's a internet. there's a lot of reasons that um, that I do not have kids. But that being said, um, yeah, my mom was younger than me when she had me, so you know. <laughs> my sci-fi fantasy students don't like Star Wars, and I want to fail them all. How can you not like Star Wars? Like, literally, if you don't like Star Wars, then how do you like anything else? Because all of this stuff that came after it like just took from star wars like i don't understand it's because it's overplayed oh my god whatever that's some hipster bullshit everyone likes star wars come on i don't like star wars that's fine but you know everything else copied it so you probably like something that's derivative of star wars and don't even realize it i don't like (laughs) sci-fi well that's fine but star wars isn't sci-fi so you know oh almost a quarter of a century old (laughs) I know. Oh, That's yeah. <laughs> Star Wars is fantasy. Yeah, Star Wars is fantasy. It's not science fiction. <clears throat> what are you talking about? I also don't like fantasy. Um- <laughs> That's a lie. That's a lie, and you know it. You like fantasy stuff. I keep writing fantasy for not liking fantasy. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I think what you actually don't like is you don't like like the stereotypical hero's journey structure. I think that that's that's what you get frustrated with that's true (laughs) and and so in a lot of sci-fi and fantasy has that story structure and you're totally fine with fantasy that has different story structures yes please make me suffer i'm not suffering enough right now jane (laughs) (laughs) 
That was that one was on purpose. Star Wars is mad to me, but I know the memes and references. I think there's also a difference with a lot of these properties experiencing them closer to when they came out, when they started, versus experiencing them later. It's kind of like people that say things like Seinfeld, Seinfeld isn't funny. And it's like, well, that's because everyone copied Seinfeld afterwards, and so you've already heard all their jokes, but they came from Seinfeld. You know, it's like, it's like that kind of thing. So it's like, Seinfeld is funny. It's just that... You know, you experienced it when you were older. Um, maybe. I don't think I've ever watched an episode of Seinfeld. Well, it's probably not that going to be that funny to you anymore, because I'm sure you've seen everything from it. But it's very, very influential on, um, on sitcoms. It's kind of like a lot. Every sitcom came after it, that came after it pretty much copied it. But I also hate laughing, so. Oh, well, you know. Can we get an exclamation Landon in the chat? <laughs> <sighs> I can't spell my own name right. I should go. <laughs> <laughs> you can. You don't have to stay. If you're done talking, you don't have to stay. Go rest up. Well, it's fine. I'll stay. I'm, I'm determined to stay for five more minutes. Five more minutes? Okay. That's fine. Full House is dope. <laughs> Full House is good. Yeah. Everywhere you look. Every oh, we can talk about this, Landon. So I, I have a take. I didn't like Encanto, but I would love to hear from you why you liked it so much. <laughs> to tell me, okay. tell me what's wonderful about Encanto. So here's the deal. I appreciate that they didn't follow the same Disney structure as they do with most of their animated movies these days. Mm. They did switch it up. Now here is the deal. You were right on a lot of your takes. However. I think a lot of your takes weren't considering the fact that the that the uh, intended audience was six. You know what? I know that my takes go too hard for the level of, that a Disney movie should be. Should okay before. So should I explain the take first before I have you talk about what you liked about Encanto? Because there are some lovely things about Encanto, but I didn't connect with it because of really one specific thing that I thought was a big flaw. But should I explain it first, or do you want to do you want to talk oh, first? Oh, you. I I need a break. You you go. <laughs> okay. All right. So here's why I didn't like Encanto. Um, I have an issue with the main character in Encanto. Um. Basically what the story is about, if you haven't seen it, the, the spoiler free version expl explaining the story is that it's about um, generational trauma. The grandmother who is, this is a Colombian family, the grandmother went through some trauma when she was younger and, um, and she passed that on through the generations to her whole family and now everyone has to suffer, right, in various different ways. And everyone reacts to this trauma in specific ways. Like one of the characters reacts to this trauma by like trying to always be the, the strongest and the support for the house. One reacts to it by constantly changing their identity and trying out new things. One of them reacts to it by being the perfect golden child and actually following all of the stupid rules that the grandmother puts out for them, right? Et cetera, et cetera, it goes on and on, right? I'm not gonna list every character because there's a gajillion of them. They're all fabulous and the way they react is fabulous, except for the main character that we're supposed to identify with most Mirabelle. She has no reaction to the trauma. She actually behaves perfectly logically, even though she is like basically a teenager or young 20 something. It's a little ambiguous, but she's a young person and she acts like she's never had trauma. She's very, she, her behavior is very well adjusted. Um, she is very uh, logical in the way that she thinks about things and reacts to things and talks to her family. Um, and I just didn't can, and I didn't connect with that, and I get very frustrated with this type of portrayal um, because I think it robs us of the ability to to empathize with people that go through trauma by making them like perfect even after they've gone through it. So here's what I would do. Here's the script doctor that I would do to fix it. So there's a section of the movie in the middle when the main character is going around to all of her different family members and trying to figure out this mystery of, of Bruno, right? She's, um, she's, there's, that's basically the plot, which I don't want to like super spoil, but, uh, Bruno has these prophetic, um, uh, that's his power. He has the power of prophecy and, uh, and so his family's scared of him and he becomes the outcast and he has to run away. And, uh, and so she's going to find Bruno because now she needs this prophecy stuff for plot reasons. And, um, and so she's going around each of her siblings to try to get pieces of information to help her with this. And, uh, and, 
And during that time, I would make her angry. Like at one point she goes to to her big sister who, who has the reaction of like, I'm gonna take care of everything and I'm just gonna handle everything, you know, as her trauma reaction. And and she and she sings this song, which is an amazing song, by the way, um, where the big sister is like talking about how the weight of the world is on her, and it's actually really difficult, and she feels uh, like that she's so she's so like um, burdened by this. And Mirabelle, a hundred percent, like empathizes with her. No, this is what Mirabelle should have done. Should have been she should have been like, yeah. So it so sucks to have a power that lets you do whatever you want. Wham. Like, and that's, and like, that's just an example, but I would have done that throughout the whole middle section of the movie, and that would have totally fixed it for me. Totally fixed it, because then Mirabelle would have a relatable reaction to the trauma that she's been through, instead of being pants, that you can just feel like you can put on and go have the little fantasy of living through your trauma and coming out better on the other side, which that's what, that's what the movie is, like, that's the fantasy that it, that it presents, which is great, but I just think that Mirabelle is freaking boring. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't. I disagree with her being boring. I think that there are aspects of her trauma, um, her trauma being that uh, she isn't awarded the same gifts as her siblings. Yeah, so and, in this movie is magical realism, by the way, and everybody has a magic power except for her, which is the yeah. sad part, right? She doesn't um, have a power. And I think, but I think like that's part. I think that there are instances in which she does show that trauma is a it a little bit is it a, is it realistic for the amount of she is 15 um oh 15 okay. realistic for the amount of trauma no for a 15 year old absolutely not um she is pants but i yeah. think that this i mean she acts like how she acts like how a 40 year old that's already processed all of their trauma would act you know <laughs> yeah. no i agree and but like i think that i think that her being pants makes her relatable to a lot of people who haven't processed their trauma. I guess. Um, Cuz they think, think they're perfect. They don't think that they they make I don't mistakes even think due that to their trauma. Perfect. I think that, that that she's easy. And what this does is it gives us an inside glance into into the side character's trauma. Whereas previously in Disney movies, it is the main character who is going through trauma and everyone around them is helping them through that trauma. Mm -hmm. All uh, tangled. Um or Little Mermaid's a great example of that. Yeah. Um, this is almost flipping that switch where it is the main character or the person that we're with the most that I would argue isn't the person that is supposed to be the most relatable, but is comfortable for the mass majority of people who have not gone through the work to process their trauma, is able to then examine all of the trauma that exists around them. Yeah, I think that's that's fine. I just don't. It's not relatable to me. I don't connect with it. Every I, I just have never met. I've never met this fifteen year old that's been through trauma and acts like this. And so I just really struggle with it. Yeah, and I, I mean the same thing happened. I I met Frozen hater by the way too. Y'all, I mean Landon knows, but now y'all all know. I hate Frozen for the same reason. I think Elsa's like a terrible, annoying character for think, the exact same Elsa. reasons. I also hate Elsa. <laughs> um, but I think what the story really did is I think that it was a beautiful glance ignoring Mirabelle it was a beautiful glance into generational trauma on yeah, every that's other that's true character, including her to an extent too as far as like the fact that she is ignored and pushed to the side and and does have her moments because I also think I think that you would have hated it if there had been a 15 year old girl whining about how she isn't special for 90% of the movie I don't know no one would have wanted to watch that I don't know. Um, if it still had the Don't Talk About Bruno song, I think I would have liked it. Because that song was banging. <laughs> banging. But she wouldn't be she wouldn't be quiet and listening during all of that because she would have been talking about like, well, at least he had powers. Um and I and I don't think anyone as a kid would have related to that because her trauma was so I think what this did is it expanded the amount of kids who could relate to certain aspects of trauma. Because Maybe. like they had they had a Peppa Peppa who is uh, her aunt whose whose power controls the weather and uh, who whose emotions control the weather. So she's constantly having to keep her emotions in check. Mm -hmm. And you have her son. And you have her son who's responsible for keeping his mother's emotions in check by basically being other people around her like and you have you have all of those examples of the con of like Dolores who's the cousin who needs to constantly be hearing everything and aware of everything because she needs to keep everything in order um and I think that this was a good look into 
the people around you's trauma rather than necessarily everyone hyper-focusing on fixing your trauma. And I think that that was an interesting turn on the story. And I think the only real way to tell a story about generational trauma being the main focus. Um, because if she hadn't, if she had her own trauma, her own trauma would have been the main focus. Instead of this, it's the generational trauma is the main focus. So you, so you think my script doctor would have resulted in some draft that um, cut the importance of other characters? <laughs> yeah, I think it would have had to. She, I mean, if she, if the main character had been solely about herself, that would have what, that's what the story would have been about. That's what the arc would have been about. Mm. We wouldn't have heard the point of view of Louisa needing a break, which is the character that is so strong. If Mirabelle's takeaway from that was, well, at least you have a power that makes you strong. <laughs> like, mm. like that would have taken away from the fact that Louisa needs a break because she is the person who everyone is relying on. I think the only like story we might have still held its integrity to might have been um might have been uh her other sisters yeah power, is isabel where it, isabel um who who can create flowers and stuff like that and it, you do see that little bit of like oh. your life is so perfect in maribel yeah and i then, really enjoyed that i wanted more of that cuz she's like so she's like she has this like internal conflict right where she has to go and and basically make up with her sister um, and uh, like these two girls fighting right here. I don't know. Apparently, Lily's fighting with some some friend they brought home. Um, <laughs> so I, I I wanted to see that, but it felt like it felt like unearned. Like she was like, oh, really? I have to go make up with my sister? Ew! And then like they instantly made up, and it just felt unearned. And I just felt like if we had seen more of Mirabelle's anger, then that scene wouldn't have felt so flat because I was excited about it. And then what I got was just very like. Meh. Yeah, I think I mean I think for a as far as a Disney movie that is marketed towards kids and has to be presented in emotions enough for kids to understand and then has deeper layers for adults to appreciate, it was very good. Uh, it was certainly better than Frozen. Oh my god, yeah, that's true. Because at Sorry, least at least it had more than one good song. Frozen had one good song. This yeah. several of the songs were really good. Yeah, no, the entire fucking soundtrack of this song the, is banging. I think that the only song that I didn't like was Isabelle's song. Yeah, I agree. Uh, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> and even, I just took a drink. Thank you. Thank you, Luna. Yeah. Um, um, this is, this. that was the only song that I was just like, this then, is boring. <laughs> I now have Bring It In, Bring It In stuck in my head. Like, it's still <laughs> catchy. Um, no, if, and also like, if you ever want an inside of what it's like to be my life, uh, I have never connected to a song so much as I've been connected to surface pressure. Mm -hmm. um, it is the song that I'm just like, wow, this is, this is me in a song. <laughs> oh my God. It was spot on. Right. Like, I mean, um, um, I definitely went through a, a phase. I, I feel like I'm out of it now, but um, I absolutely connected with surface pressure. I, I went through a, a phase with uh, with all of that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> as the, as the uh, eldest daughter of a family that is riddled in generational pressure and is expected to keep the emotional stability mm -hmm. of everybody else's emotions in check. Uh, that surface pressure. <laughs> Did I mean, it's still, it's still in my head. Like, it's like, the drip, stop. drip, drip, that'll never stop. Like, it's yeah. just, it's so good. It was um, so good. Give it to your sister and never wonder if the same pressure would have pulled you under. And I'm just like, oh my God, how many times <laughs> I wanted to just shout that at a sibling. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and yet, I have not. So, <laughs> all right. Now that we've discussed Encanto... Uh, I love you all very much, but I need to go back to bed. <laughs> okay. Um, Rest up, Landon. We will see you yeah. next week when we're actually going to be talking about um, the fourth Harry Potter yeah. book. So, um, so yeah, then we'll actually kind of get into some more of the, the Harry Potter stuff with that we were talking about a little bit earlier. And, uh, and we'll talk, we'll talk more about that book. Yeah, in particular. no, it'll be fun. And House of Night, I would love if you, uh, if you joined us for mm -hmm. next week, that you'd have some really cool insights. Yes. So, all right, I go bed now. Okay, good night. Bye. Sleep well. See you later. I'm so glad Landon was able to come on for just a little bit. Um, that wasn't really planned. It's just that she woke up this morning and uh, and was feeling a little bit better. And so I asked her, like, well, do you want to come on and just chat? 
uh, no obligation or anything to to stay or or whatever. And uh, and she she said yes. So, <clears throat> yep. Oh my gosh! Wow! Thank you so much for the raid, Sask. Um, can we get her? Oh, I got it. Because the Sims aren't really doing anything right now. Let's do a shout out for Saskatoon. I think I spelled that right. Yes, I did. Okay, y'all should definitely all go follow Saskatoon. Um, he has great content. It's awesome. Oh, yes, my plugin is working. I didn't know if it would. Thank you. Thank you for the applause, as. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Uh, <laughs> I think it's funny it chose that clip. <laughs> Where'd you go? You Where are you going? Is that Fortnite? Oh yeah, that's Fortnite. You're playing Fortnite. Well, what were you playing today, Sask? Oh, Marvel's Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Oh, that's a good game. Um, I watched my husband play that. Oh, that's Ark. Ark looks different every time I see it. Um, I swear to God. <laughs> it looks like a totally different game every time I see it. Sometimes there's not even any dinosaurs. So I don't really understand. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's lunchtime though. Okay, yes. Go have lunch. I hope you have something really tasty. We're having beef ribs tonight. I'm really excited. Um, I love beef ribs. And Levi smokes them and um and they get like really like cooked down. They're like meat butter. So good. So good. Okay, Lily's hungry, so let's let's get some leftovers. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Beef ribs, what time are we eating? Um, probably around five, if you want to come over as. Uh, beef ribs make so much meat, there will definitely be extra for a couple more people. So if you want to join us as, probably around uh, five o'clock. Uh, get here. If you get in the car now, you might make it. <laughs> I say that having no idea where you live, but I assume it's somewhere on the East Coast because that's basically most people are in Eastern time, but I don't know. Do you marinate the ribs? I don't think he marinates them. I think he just, um, I think he rubs them and smokes them. I don't, I don't think he doesn't marinate for the beef ribs. At least I've never seen him do one. I'm trying to talk mom into getting pizza for dinner. <gasps> okay, Lunar's mom, get pizza for dinner. Get it from that one place you guys really like that also has the good, um, antipast salads. Um, it's a good idea. There we go. Did it work, Lunar? Did that convince her? You can clip that and then, um, send that to her. Oh, it's Saturday. That's why no one's going to school or work or anything. Oh, she needs more charisma points, but she hasn't enrolled anything for that. She wants to learn anger management and fire prevention. Why do you guys keep rolling getting to private school? You guys are not rich enough for that. Earn some money. We can lock that because you do have a job, which you will go to on Monday. So we'll lock that for you. What wants do we have here? Want to buy a cell phone? Wants to Jennifer see Jennifer as a zombie? Oh my god. Uh, go to college, see Wolf. So the go to college one, I'm not really going to pay attention to until it's like the day right before they're going to age up. And then if they have that want on that day, then I will, um, you know, do that. Levi owes me beef ribs. <gasps> oh my gosh, Jane, thank you so much for using your prime for me. Uh, Jane, of course you are welcome. Of course you are welcome to some beef ribs. I, I'm pretty, I, you're, you are definitely in, East, um, in Eastern time, I know that. So if you get in the car now, you can make it. I believe in you. I'll just drive fast like the wind. <laughs> you have, let's see, you have four hours. You have four hours. It's probably a little unrealistic. Uh, but nobody's invented teleporters yet, so, you know. What are you guys going to do? Oh, you're going to go play catch? You're really hungry, though, Torment. You just, you let yourself get so hungry. Uh, let's see. Why don't you have some lunch meat sandwiches? Yeah, we'll do that. Um, she wants to learn anger management and fire prevention. I guess it couldn't hurt to learn fire prevention. Let's do that. I love that she still lives her, like, underwear pajama life. It's like, such goals. <laughs> Pandemic goals. 
she's going to become an elder in three days, so she's she probably is going to become an elder on this stream. <laughs> exactly, it's just who she is. Yeah, that's one of the follower emotes, Lunar, so you probably only see that when I'm, I'm live. You probably don't see it in your emote list whenever you're in other streams. I love that they have follower emotes now. It's awesome. So welcome in Raiders, by the way. Um, I will explain a little bit about what I do. We are doing um, a Sims 2 Legacy Challenge right now. Um, this is my show, Inner Stage Window. Uh, we don't typically do this, though. Typically what we're doing is more of a podcast type of format where we talk about a book or a TV show or a movie or something like that. Um, this is also, Saturdays are also my stream times where we do community days. So once a month we have community days where we do, um, a, a group thing. But, uh, the first half of the stream that, uh, that you guys had missed, basically we had landed on for just a little bit where normally she is on for the whole thing, but be, it's because she unfortunately, um, caught COVID. So since my, my co-host is, uh, has COVID right now, we are doing my kind of like backup, uh, stream, which is working, which is doing the Sims 2 legacy so that's why we're doing that and kind of what we're doing and then also here we go uh, interstage window and my saturday streams are sponsored by audible so if you're interested in signing up for audible then um you can do so with my link for your 30-day free trial and uh and that will help out the show hang on the dog wants in there you go. You made it. <clears throat> we have a lot of fun here. We do a lot of shenanigans. We're all about um, storytelling and telling uh, better and more interesting stories. So, of course, Sims 2 is a great game for that. Karen, I'm already subscribed to Audible, but I wonder if I let it lapse and use your thing if it will help you. I, I don't know. I have no idea if it will let you do one of the um, sponsored like 30-day trials if you already have a subscription, but you could test it out and see. Um, I have not personally tested it out myself. I'm in the same situation. Um, but we just got the sponsorship turned on just this week, so I just I haven't tried it. Ooh, that bathtub is really, really dirty. You, you should go clean that. Torment has the day off today. Okay. <clears throat> I'll let you know. Yeah, definitely let me know. I'm really curious. I have no idea if that'll work or not. But I hope it does. Let's see. What wants do we have for Torment? He wants to earn some money, which I've locked in. Because he, really, he can't really earn any money until he goes to work again, which isn't until Monday. She wants to see a wolf. Let's see. I don't think there's... I think I just have to, like, notice a wolf walking by for her to see a wolf. I don't think I can have her go out and search for one. Does she have... Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I don't, I don't want you to take a picture. I was just trying to see what options we have. Um, she can... Yeah, I don't think there's any... I don't think there's any way that we can have her... Without... I don't think I have any mods that'll do anything like that. Alright, I'm gonna let this play for just a second. I gotta take a quick... Oh, no, go away. I didn't mean to press that. Okay, I'm gonna let them just go for a second. Can, they can do what they want for a second because I got to take a quick bathroom break. I'll be right back, guys. Okay, there we go. 
I'm back. I like reading myself. It annoys me listening to someone else reading out loud. I've always been that way. Oh, that's so interesting. Um, I feel, I feel totally the opposite. Um, but I also like my, my mom read to me a lot. Like that was like a bedtime routine, my mom reading to me. So maybe I just got used to it. I don't know. I just, I really like prefer audiobooks and podcasts and things like that. I, I became a very, very slow reader in, uh, in college when, you know, having to read a lot of textbooks and, and take notes while I'm reading them and things like that and study. So, um, it's, uh, it's very hard for me now to sit and read for long periods of time. I just never really got that skill back. Um, unfortunately. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, I definitely do audio way more. I audio everything I can. Yeah. I audio everything that I can. If there's not an audio version, then I will try to find like a PDF version that I can put into like one of those like, um, screen reader type things. You know, I, I try to not like just read the text. It takes me way too long. I always like doing stuff the old way. I understand. I definitely understand that. <laughs> I love how the teenagers run to the phone. Yeah, Landon can talk. That's fine. It kind of interrupts her studying, but whatever. It's not a big deal. Oh, now the kitty cat wants back in. You just left, kitty cat. Come on, lady. Since we have so many people that are newer in the stream today, I'll show Lady. This is Lady. This is our little kitten. She was kind of an accident for us getting her, but she's very cute and we love her very much. Isn't that right, Lady? There you go. Why don't you go lay over there? And if y'all want to see um, Queen, and I just put Lady on the bed, hopefully she'll stay there. If y'all want to see Queen and Lady, we can turn on the baby cam if somebody wants to do the to do that. It's one of the channel point redeems. So grown. Yeah, they've gotten so big. If Oreo comes in here, Jane, I'll show you how big Oreo has gotten. He is massive now. He's almost as big as Queen is. I'm like sh amazed. I can't, I can't believe it. Okay, so she got that. Fabulous. Okay, here we go, Lunar. We can see the babies. Where's baby Cam? There it is. Okay. Let's put that actually up here. There we go. Lunar beat me. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lunar. I do need a posture check. Yeah, so there's Queen. She's our little our little black kitty cat. She's the a little our void. What are you guys doing? What are you teenagers doing? You're just hanging out? They're getting hungry. Let's see. Why don't you try to serve dinner? Why don't you make mac and cheese for everybody, Tormund? Stop hanging out for a second. Go make mac and cheese. Is that a stuffed wolf puppy? Do I have it? No, Um, it looks kind of wolfish, but it's not. This is... It's a fennec fox. See? You can see its face. I have a gray and white male one-year-old kitty. His name is Khalifa. Oh, what a good kitty cat name, Khalifa. Um, no, the gray and white one. Oh, no, it's a, that's a beanie baby husky dog. Yeah, that's the husky dog, beanie baby. I have a couple beanie babies still, somehow, after all this time. Why is an exclamation Kendra working? What's happening? Huh. I'll have to look at that one. We definitely- I thought we had an exclamation Kendra. Oh, she doesn't have one. <gasps> Kendra! How do you not have an exclamation Kendra? I'm sure you have enough points for one. Y'all help Kendra come up with what exclamation Kendra should be. Oh, it's only two days before Landon's birthday. She's gonna become an elder in two days. <clears throat> make it advertised for your streams. Yeah, since you stream Kendra, we can make it so, um, you know, follow follow Kendra. I stream on Mondays, whatever your time is, I can't remember. I think it's like noon Pacific time. That feels weird. Why? That's what I originally thought people would do with it. I thought when I put it on there, people would originally get it and um, 
put like, you know, things that they wanted to promote, like, you know, follow my Twitter or whatever, or, um, or like, uh, you know, stream favorite artist or whatever. Hey, welcome in Phantom Hippie. Thank you so much. Um, I like to play wants based, so we will adopt pets if any of the Sims roll wants for adopting pets. Um, we did have a want for a bird, but we never got to stock the cage because we ran out of, we didn't have money. So <laughs> that's why we have a bird cage with no bird in it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we might adopt a pet. If the Sims roll wants for adopting pets, then we will. Follow Lunar for FNAF and jump scares. <laughs> what if exclamation Kendra was like, follow Lunar? <laughs> you know, Lunar, if you want a second one, um, you're welcome to redeem a, a second one. Just tell me what you want the exclamation to be. You know, your one right now, I think, is exclamation lunar, exclamation lunar, whichever one. So just get tell me what you want the exclamation to be as well as what it should say. And, and you can have more, you know. So if you want, like, exclamation um, FNAF or exclamation pizza or I don't know, what's other lunar things? Exclamation Taylor Swift. Um, and we can have it be like a promotion for you if you want to do that. That's fine. Let's see what they're doing. Wolf Swift Pizza. <laughs> yeah, so y'all can totally do promotions. Wolf Swift Pizza. It's like the Lunar Trifecta of Wolf Swift Pizza. <laughs> They love to play this punch you punch me game. Let's see, what wants does Landon have? Lily is an overachiever. Be best friends with Samantha. Lily gets an A-plus report card. Torment is an overachiever. Well, most of that really you don't have control over, Landon, so I don't know what to tell you. Mm. Oh, there's mac and cheese on the table. Why don't you eat the mac and cheese your son made? Tormund's fir the firstborn, so of course he's an overachiever. He was, he got all the way up to an A-plus report card, but then he stopped rolling wants for doing his homework. But he still keeps rolling wants for private school and college. But um, if he doesn't want to do his homework, then I don't make him do his homework. So his grades are were slipping a little last, last he went to school. Let's see, he's got a B right now. He was doing really good, but he got up to an A, but he slipped back down to a B because he stopped wanting to do his homework, you know. Why don't you stop that and go eat some food, Landon? And it's funny that Landon's not rolling any wants for this crush right here, Christy. I wish the PS4 Sims 4 had wants. They just have, have aspirations and needs. Oh, yeah. I've never connected with any of the um, console versions of Sims. I've, I've played several of them, but I've never been super interested. Um, and, I've, and I've played Sims 3. I had enjoyment from that. Um, Sims 4, I really don't like. Um, there are certain aspects of it that are cool, but overall not super into it. But no matter what I do, I just keep coming back to Sims 2. I just, I love the Sims 2. It's the best one. And I've got mine modded. To all to hell. So it does exactly what I want whenever I want. <laughs> all right. Sims 2 was the best. Yep, it's the best one. It's the best one. Why don't you? Why don't you go to the bathroom? Sims 2 exactly, Jane. It's the best. Best one. Why don't you put away leftovers? We can't really afford in this house yet to do that, to not um, save our leftovers. Um, Landon, I bet we have bills. I bet we have bills in here that we need to pay. So let's sort that out. You can use this toilet, it's okay. I'm trying to scroll out so I can see if a wolf passes by, but I don't know if we're going to see one. <clears throat> Pay bills. And it's red, so they're pretty late. Because I haven't been paying attention and having them check the mail. <laughs> I 
She wants to buy a cell phone. I wish the teenagers wouldn't roll that one. Why are you accosting your child in the bathroom to play games? Landon, you're silly. I feel like the weekend finally let us catch up on a lot of our sims needs because they were staying pretty in in the red all the time because they had like no fun in the sims 2 xbox gamecube and ps2 you can't age up or have kids or even create kids but they had wants and fears and you can control the walking i don't really remember i don't know if i ever played the sims 2 console one but i don't remember it really i think it had like a weird tutorial in the beginning I like this vague memory of that, where there was, like, you would log in, you would, like, go into the game, and it had, like, these kind of tasks that it expected you to do with the sim. I feel like I vaguely remember that for the, the PS2 Sims 2. But I might be totally wrong. I feel like we've done, our sims have done pretty good this stream. The last time we played this, it was like kind of a disaster, if you guys remember. Um, go back and look at the first frame of this stream, where we uh, where we logged into the game and we, we opened it up and we, uh, Tormund was all sooted because he set everything on fire when he tried to cook. <laughs> um, why you hate us so much, Jennifer? Calm down. My god. Now we gotta go pick this up so we don't get roaches. Because I definitely don't want to be dealing with roaches. Yeah, it had goals to move to a different household. Yeah, that's what I really remember about it. But I don't think I played it that much because I really don't remember what, what the game does like after you like meet those goals or whatever it might maybe it does nothing and it just lets you play i because i but i just don't remember jumbo jumbo all right i guess you guys can start going to bed it's about that time let's go to sleep I feel like Landon's getting a little bit more responsible in her older age. She's a she's a messy sim, so that's why I like the books left on the floor and some stuff like that. But she actually cleaned the shower without me telling her to. So that's progress. She's growing up on her way to becoming an elder. <laughs> but it was the first and only Sims game you can, game you can play with two players. Oh, I didn't know that. Didn't they have like an online Sims that was only around for a couple of years before it shut down? I feel like that happened in the Sims world as well, but I don't really remember the context with it. Yeah, and was it called just like Sims Online? Was that all it was? Landon has today off today. Let's get... No, not hobbies. I want miscellaneous party. Yeah. Let's get Landon a birthday cake. What different choices do we have here? Let's get this one. But it was split screen. Sims Online is still around? Really? Like, the servers still operate? I'm shocked. I cannot believe that. Cause I feel like it was it was gone so fast.
I thought I told you to go potty. When your kids get up, we'll have your birthday party. <clears throat> and age you up. Oh, I thought it would switch over to one day. I guess it's not quite time yet. You're thinking of Sims 1 online? I must be. So what is what is the online Sims like now? Like, what do they do? <laughs> oh my god, she still wants to go buy a cell phone. Okay. Um, Why don't we go somewhere? You can drive. No, you don't need to take anyone. Let's see. What has Electronic Super Center? That must have. Yeah, that must have cell phones. Let's go there. And we'll lock that in. We'll buy you a cell phone. You keep rolling it. You must really want it. Well, there's Sims Free Play and Sims Mobile. I have played that Sims Mobile game. Um, it's cute. It's cute, but I, I lost interest pretty quickly. And it's definitely like something where you can't unlock all the stuff um, unless you've been playing since the beginning. Um, so yeah, I found I find those kinds of mobile games a bit annoying. But I did play I did play the Sims mobile game for quite a while. It kept me entertained for a good couple months before I was like. Uh, this is annoying at this point. I wonder what kind of interface changes you'd have to have to Sims 2 to make it a viable mobile game. Because this game is old, so I feel like it physically, like you could make a version that ran on phones, but you'd have to totally do a different interface. Okay. Is there... Is there, can you buy cell phones here? Maybe not. I know it's like one of those little kiosks things where you buy cell phones from. Which I don't see one here. There's no actions available. Okay. Well, here's what we're going to do. Why don't you go home? This isn't open for business lot. That's why it doesn't work like that. I don't remember what lots have the little kiosk on them. I'll have to go put it on one. And then she can buy a cell phone. I love how they just park in the street. Not a care in the world. No big deal. Sims Free Play with Sims 3 Gen and Sims Mobile with Sims 4 Gen. I honestly couldn't tell you which one I played, whether it was called Free Play or if it was called Mobile. I don't remember. But I know it was a while back, and I know I, I played it for a couple of months before I got bored of it. But it was one of those. It was probably Sims 3 era, if I think about the timing of it. But I'm not really sure. But most likely it was Sims 3 era. Okay, let's pause. No, I didn't mean to click that button. Let's do save. I put Doc Allen's Hangout here. I think I can, I can put one of those kiosks in Doc Allen's Hangout. I think that's fine. So we'll just go edit his hang out and um, put one of those in. Let's see. This is a redesigned Doc Allen's Hangout, by the way, that I downloaded from Pleasant Sims. So it's not exactly like the original Doc Allen's Hangout. It's got some modifications to it. Hmm. 
queen's looking so cute back there. And I don't know, Lady, I think, is just off just off screen, but she's laying on the bed too, but I think but she's just off camera. All right, let's go down. Yeah, so they have those vending machines. Okay. Where is this thing? Magazine rack. Freestanding game rack. That's where you buy the mobile games. Countertop display. Oh, I can't remember. Here, we're gonna Google it real quick. Which item lets you buy cell phones? No, I don't want to buy a real cell phone. Okay, Cellophon Gadget Kiosk is what it's called. The Community Lot Object. Da, 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 da. Okay, it's called Cellophon Gadget Kiosk. It's got to be in here somewhere. Aha, here it is. Okay. So we'll put one of these on in Doc Allen's hangout. Mm, right there. And then we'll have her come here and buy a cell phone. Because I try to only every once at once one generation add a community lot to the legacy land. So I don't want to add another community lot right now. But eventually I'll add some more stuff as we kind of progress through this. But what we have to have a torment have a kid before we can add any other community lots for them. Okay. Back at the house. Also, I have a mod that will let us play the time that Lily's away, so I have to wait a little bit for Lily to get back to the house. Oh, buy a handheld game. We could do that, too. So we can buy them both their things that they want. We have a little bit of money, so it should be fine. Why don't you toss a football? Yeah. Family sim wants are so easy. They're so simple. And we'll just speed it up until she gets home. Okay, she's back. And you're gonna go out again, only we're gonna go to a lot where this actually will work. Why are there no actions available? Oh, there we go. Go somewhere. And Tormund can come too. And we're going to go to Doc Allen's hangout. Sorry, Landon. Your kids are done with you. They're going elsewhere. Does she have any other wants we can do right now? She just has wants for her kids. I don't understand. Landon, you can't control them. You have to let them do what they want. Kitty cat. That's a fluffy black kitty cat, just like Queen. Aww. Here, I'll adjust this camera. You guys can see Lady, too. I think if I just turn this a little bit. You'll see her in the background. Yeah, there we go. Now she's in this frame. <laughs> All right. 
So you guys are both gonna go buy something. Okay, so he wants to buy the game. Okay. What's up, friends and townies? And she wants to buy a cell phone. Alright, what new wants does he have? Go to college, go to private school, earn some money, ask a sim on a date. Oh, that's an interesting one. Let's see. Who's here? Jennifer MacArthur's not here. But maybe you could make, make get better friends with Jennifer and ask her on a date. Oh, now she wants to get an A-plus report card, so I guess that kind of counts as her wanting to do her homework. Alright, so we'll go home and then we'll invite this girl, Jennifer MacArthur, over. I think that's the one that Lily fought with. <laughs> uh, maybe that's why they were fighting? Because she didn't want Tormund to have a friend? Oh no. That's problematic, Lily. That's problematic. I don't know about all that. Okay. Landon is home alone. She keeps making a mess with the books. <gasps> My face just got hit by a, by a dog. Ah, ha, ha, that's too funny. My dog doesn't really do stuff like that because, um... She is, she's old. She's like 14. Um, so she doesn't really do much of that kind of stuff. But the, the kittens definitely uh, can get physical <laughs> when they want something and do some head butts and things for sure. <laughs> it's very cute. I encourage it personally. Oh, you need to, you need to have some breakfast. You hungry. Why does she not sit in a chair? Oh, she was writing in her diary. For some reason, a lot of Sims will do that on the floor. I'm not really too sure why. I, I suppose they could write in their diary in a chair, but that's just not how the animation works. For some reason. They just do it on the floor. All right, the kids are home. Why don't you call your friend? My cat will do anything to look out the window. Oh yeah. Our cats um, cycle around the house to look specifically to just look out the different windows. And I feel like they do it like in like the way the sun moves and what rooms are the warmer ones, but they really just want to look out the windows. Okay. Let's invite her over. Yay, she coming. Alright, why don't you go change into every day? There we go. Now he's dressed and appropriate for his friend coming over. Okay, so maybe we should talk with her. 
I mean, he definitely needs somebody, so. Hey, Tap, how's it going? Did you come over in the, um, the Saskatchewan raid? How are you doing today? Okay, thank you so much. Cheers. Yes, oh, I hope you're having a good Saturday. Tap, oh, I started my Nuzlocke run on Thursday. Um, so we're, we're doing leaf green. I already lost a friend. We're trying not to lose more, <laughs> but we did lose one friend in the first stream. Um, I was, I was unhappy with that, but you know, it's part of it. It's part of it. You know, I take it as revenge, um, almost for how many of your Pokemon died after you named that Jigglypuff Karen. <laughs> Okay, stop it. You're trying to get a date with this girl. Talk to her. I'm um, just working, but what I'm doing today has zero activity on it to actually moderate since yesterday evening. Oh, those are, those are like, I, I feel I have a very mixed feeling about those type of work days. On one hand, it's wonderful to get paid to do nothing. But on the other hand, it's pretty boring. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I lost the Mankey. I was so sad because he was going to be my backup for Brock. So I chose Bulbasaur. But I was like, oh, I'll have the Mankey, Mankey for backup, you know. Uh, but... Not anymore. Not anymore. The poor, poor Mankey. Poor Potato Loaf the Mankey. Alright, why don't we tell her a joke? Lily, stop it. Do not fight with her. I don't know why y'all hate each other so much, but she needs to stop it. That's gonna be probably your, your future, um, your future in-law. Sister-in-law. <laughs> Alright, come on, they're gonna have to be friends soon. Why don't we have them gossip? That's a good idea. Gotta remember that whole area Brock nearly ended that run early. I remember that. I remember your poor struggles with Brock. It was like... <laughs> it was so... It was so sad. Um, what game is this now? How to Mankey pass away? So that's, um, Pokemon. I'm playing Leaf Green as a Nuzlocke. So that means when your Pokemon faints, it dies. And I was leveling up my Pokemon just a little bit, because in the very beginning, like, you catch several. So I was like, let me get them a few levels. And I don't like to grind on stream, because I think that's really boring. But that was, like, one section where I kind of was forced to, you know? Otherwise, it would have been a very short stream. So I did that, and I just was not really paying good attention because I was trying to be entertaining and talk about things. So I was, like, talking about random things, you know? And um, and then a crit happened, and that was it. Can it be exclamation FNAF, and it can say, Oh, yes, we can totally do that, Lunar. Karen suffered for us, as I always like to do. Thanks, Kendra. I feel like that was probably... Trying to help Tormund out with his with his romance. Okay, they're friends now. I wonder if he flirts. Like, let's check her out. Okay, stop punching her. Okay, he's interested. Oh my god. Stop it. Can he break up the fight? Why do they keep fighting? Why does she hate him so much? Hmm... Why do you hate her, Lily? Yeah, I don't think there's a good way. Yeah, no problem, Lunar. I will get that set up for you, and we'll have that set up next stream. Oh, no. Don't be sad. Don't be sad, girl. My sister's a bitch. She doesn't understand. She doesn't understand you, but I do. I understand you. Oh, yeah. Good job. Okay. Let's see if we can ask on a date. Um, more. Let's see. Ask. Uh, what do you fear? Da, da, da. On date. There we go. I'll get to test it out next Saturday. That's right. Uh-oh. 
She didn't like that. She had negative. I don't know what happened. Stop fighting! Oh my god. They're gonna have to go somewhere for their date. Okay, let's go somewhere. Who needs a ride? Tormund and Jennifer. Yes, that's right. We're gonna go to Doc Allen's hangout away from Lily, <laughs> who keeps trying to fight. <laughs> he gave her a noogie. Maybe that was why? Maybe that was why she got like that? Stop crying! Oh my gosh, thank you so much for your prime, um, Mega Boot Lord. Welcome in, by the way. I hope you're having fun with us today. Um, we're gonna take Tormund and Jennifer on this on this date. Yeah, welcome. There we go. Okay. Get away from this crazy girl. Lily. Trying to fight somebody. I missed what made them so angry at each other. I don't know what it was. But it's okay. Torma was there to rescue. Rescue his lady love. By the way, um, Mega, since I don't... I don't think you're in there, since you're a subscriber now, keep in mind you can join the Discord, and there is a subscriber-only chat in there, so you're welcome to that. Oh, that's beautiful. I got the flashing... flashing glitch. Love it. Love it. Okay, so... Dine out, tell a joke, entertain. Okay, we're definitely gonna tell her a joke. Oh my gosh, stop walking, girl. Where are you going? Where are you going? This song's my jam. And I don't think you can... You can order drinks at Doc Allen's, but I don't think you can order food. I don't think we have it set up like that. She has a popularity aspiration. Interesting. She wants to talk. Okay, we can talk. She wants to be best friends. She wants to play cards. Okay. And he wants to play cards too. Okay, let's play cards. Okay, we have about, I think that the way this works, the timer keeps going when good things happen. We're almost at the end of stream time. Okay, stop talking for a second. Oh my god, she wants to see the ghost of Lily, that's too funny. That's too funny. Okay, um, I think I have to ask her to join more yeah ask to join come play cards with me oh sophie you're wearing the same clothes as my sister that's weird oh no it's still counting down okay we're gonna finish the day thing oh why are you getting up where are you going jennifer Oh, she wants to go out. <gasps> okay, okay. Hang on. I think I can ask her to go study. Where is it? Propose. Go study. Ha ha. He hasn't even had his first kiss or anything. Hey, I had so much fun in that really short card game with you. What do you think? Oh, she says no. <sighs> she says no. I guess go out would be like leave the lot. Um, why don't you flirt? Why don't you hit on her? Let's be risky. Oh, he wants to hug her. 
Okay. Let's hug. Let's do a romantic hug. Let's see if we can get first kiss. Yeah! God, his freaking eyebrows. <laughs> He's got that land grab face for sure. How cute, right in the middle of Doc Allen's hangout, next to the soda machines. Romantic. Okay. Well, it was a nice date. We had our first kiss. Very good. Let's see where their relationship's at. Okay, so they've got friend and crush, but no um, best friend or love. But that's okay. We'll build up to that. Okay, let's send... Let's send um, home. That's some Doki Doki romance there. That's right. It is. Like, we got that little Doki Doki pitter-patter in the heart. We're gonna send him home, we're gonna save, and then we'll do our good news article. I've got a fun one picked out for you guys. Bye, girl. See you later. When I first loaded up the lot before the stream started, I was really confused because I had forgotten about the whole fire thing. And I saw that Torment's face was like all sooted up. And I was like, what? What happened to his face? What? And then I loaded the lot and I remembered. But um, it was like it was like a panic moment. Like, did something happen to them? <laughs> did my Sims get messed up, you know, while we weren't playing? All right, we'll save. And then we'll exit. Yes. Okay. As you guys know, The Sims 2 streams are sporadic, so I'm unsure when we'll do another one. Um, but uh, at some point we will. Okay. Let me switch back to webcam only for a second. All right. And I can pull up the article. For all of our newer people here, we like to end our Saturday streams with a little bit of good news. Um, it's just kind of something nice to kind of get a little bit of feel goods about, um, you know, what's going on in the world. So that's what we like to do. And I've got a fun one for us today. And it is all about a little donkey named Betty. Let me turn on baby cam. There we go. All right, so um, as you all know, uh, Betty White passed away at the age of um, 99, almost 100. I'd like to think that she did make it to 100, and she was really big into uh, animal activism. So um, if, if you want to donate in Betty's name to your favorite animal charity or shelter, I think that's a good idea. But here's one of the stories about somebody doing that sort of thing. Um, a baby donkey is named Betty White to honor a celebrity who donated to their animal sanctuary for years. So this is an animal sanctuary in particular that Betty supported. And, um, and this donkey was born very recently at that sanctuary. And, um, and so this is, this is something that they did to honor her. And we learned our lesson from last time when we play little videos is to not make them full screen. So we're going to keep it small because otherwise the copyright, uh, thing will come from me when I post the VOD to YouTube. So we're going to play this little video. Um, let's see if this player can let me. Okay. It's not really talking or anything. So the full is that Texas Donkey Rescue was named after the TV icon following her death. So this is little Fall, it's so cute. Aww. Yeah, so White made donations to this rescue. She donated to others as well, but this one in particular. So they did this. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with Betty White, I don't know how that happened, but if you're not, she was mainly known for the Golden Girls. Oh, nope, 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 don't play the next video, which um, was a hilarious comedy show that won um, tons of um, Emmys and things like that. 
Um, she's, she's a comedy icon, really, really funny. And since she passed away and everybody was kind of talking about her, there's been so many just excellent Betty White clips that have been posted to, uh, to Twitter and, uh, and elsewhere. So I've been really enjoying that. I do think Betty White is, um, really, really funny. And, uh, and I love that she made it all the way to 99 years old, never really having a controversy. You can't say that about most celebrities. Most celebrities have something that they've done that, upset people or was problematic or whatever, but um, but not Betty, not Betty White. She was typically on the right side of history and respectful of, um, of anyone and everyone, which is really nice. Can't say that about most celebrities. So uh, she's definitely, definitely goals, definitely goals. All right, let's see. Let's see who is on that we can raid into. Oh, let's see. Do we want to raid? So we've got Dom is playing Mountain Blade 2, Gamer Goblin's playing Halo Infinite, and Legion is playing Day Z. Do any of those appeal to you guys? It's been a while since we've raided all three of those guys. Let me just go see also who is, if there's any good looking Sims 2 streams right now. Kind of continue the Sims 2 thing. We could do that. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. Not a lot of live Sims 2 channels right now. There are a few. Oh, I see mine in there. Ha 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 ha. Um, who's this historical simmer? I like that name. Let's let me just open up their stream. We'll go through the ad and make sure that it sounds good. Um, let me mute the desktop sound so I can just listen to them without y'all bothering you guys for a second. Okay, she sounds good. She looks good. All right, guys. So here's all my socials. This is all the places that you can find me. You know how it does. I do things just like every other uh, content creator. Remember, also, Interstage Window is sponsored by Audible. Um, so here's the link for that. If you are interested in doing a 30-day free trial of Audible, if you do it via that link, you will help support what we do here on Interstage Window. Um, also, of course... Uh, we are also part of, um, Elixir, which is a, a Twitch, uh, networking server. So if you're a Twitch streamer as well, and you're interested in finding some other awesome Twitch streamers, Elixir is a great place to do that. Uh, okay. Let me actually type the raid now. So we're going to raid into historical simmer. They look fun. All right. Uh, I spelled something wrong. It didn't work. Let me just copy and paste. You already have a raid in progress, but it didn't pop up. Hmm, I don't see the little countdown for my raid that's supposedly in progress. So I'm not sure what's going on, if you guys are gonna end up raiding or not. <laughs> Usually I have to click one more button. Can I cancel a raid that I... Hmm. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. Hang on. Welcome back, Jane. You came back just in time. We're about to raid into Historical Simmer. If I can get the raid to work, something is wrong with it. Something went wrong. Try running that quick action again later. Hmm. Well, maybe we're not raiding today. I'm so sorry. I always try to end the stream with raiding into somebody, but it is not working right now. Uh, I don't really know why. I apologize. Anyway, uh, if you want to watch some more Sims 2 content, this is who I was trying to raid into. But it's not working. So anyway, we're just going to end stream then. Thank you so much, you guys, for joining me today. Um, as always, of course, don't forget to make it a great day. I will see you again on Thursday for more Pokemon Leaf Green Nuzlocke. And we'll be doing our Harry Potter Goblet of Fire stream next Saturday. Thank you all so much. Have a great day. Um, don't forget to make it a great day. All of that stuff. Okay, bye, guys. Bye. It feels awkward without a raid. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs>